ho ho ho, tis the season for a cash in game. Welcome to Chinivision. Yes, there's nothing like Christmas to make a few quid. Those tatty shops that pop up in the high street in December, selling all sorts of rubbish and anything really to do with Christmas. So it's unsurprising that Zeppelin felt, mm, we can make a few pounds from Christmas. Let's do a, a Christmas tie-in game. And so this is Santa's Christmas Capers and uh, on the CPC Sinclair Spectrum and Commodore 64. Also available on the SC and Amiga, but we're only looking at the 8-bit versions today. And there's a terrible tune on the menu screen here on the CPC. Absolutely awful. And it's completely out of tune. I mean, it, it's just out of tune. Uh, nicely drawn candle at the bottom of the screen there, but off we go. And yes, you can't quite believe what you're looking at. Uh, there's Rudolph, a sleigh. No Santa in the sleigh. I can't see... Can you see Santa in the sleigh there? No. And you've got to shoot snowballs at the enemies and pick up presents. There are three stages. You get three lives um, to get you through these jerkily moving along, very basic graphics. Um, Amstrad Action absolutely slaughtered this game, by the way, and you can probably see why. Okay, so let's try and look at some positives. The graphics are colourful. The animation's pretty poor. The screen's also very, very small. You've got to shoot baddies such as Christmas crackers, uh, ball things. And yeah, the controls aren't very responsive and a lot of the baddies just go straight from right to left. It's absolutely terrible, really. I mean, what do you say? There's no music or anything when you're playing the game. It is just very poor sound effects. Ducks. What have ducks got to do with Christmas? I don't know. What have balls got to do with Christmas? Game over. No fun has been had at all. Let's so go over to the Spectrum. Looks very similar to the Amstrad loading screen here. And there is a tune. And it is equally out of tune. Just like the CPC. Who did the music for this game? They were clearly tone deaf and knew nothing about music. Santa's Christmas Capers, copyright 1990 Zeppelin games, coding and graphics. Oh, you've always got to be suspicious of anybody who spells it graphics with an X. So I'm defining my keys here. I'm playing some of my Spectrum 48K for a change because people say, oh, I'm always using a plus two. So that's, it would, that's why the, you're seeing composite video as opposed to RGB because I thought I'd do a few games on... The full JK and off we go and similar setup to the CPC bit faster. Um, still no Santa sitting on the sleigh. It is just Rudolph and the sleigh shooting snowballs, as Rudolph does. This is not lasers, I suppose. Um, it's faster than the CPC, but it makes it oddly even less playable. Some of the graphics are difficult to see. Okay, it's a Spectrum game, so you expect that, but it just jerks along and it's no fun. At all. I mean, why would a Father Christmas game be a shoot 'em up? I've played better games from the shoot 'em up construction kit than this. Oh dear, it's not very good at all. And the game speeds up when there's nothing on the screen. It's not a massive slowdown. And we get to the end of the level, and here's a giant snowman. So we've got at least we've got a nice end of level baddie here. And we've got to shoot him on the nose. I, I do like this, even if he doesn't do much that's exciting at least you know in a, in a good shoot em up you have a good end of level baddie but this does mean that we're already a third of the way through the game there are only three levels so that's what two minutes something like that so we're probably going to finish this game in about six minutes if i get that far which i probably won't given i've got no lives left takes a lot of snowballs to kill the giant snowman. Just got to keep hitting him on the nose. Nearly there. Come on. A couple more. There we go. Well done. Level one completed. 
And I think it's given me an extra life as a reward. Well, isn't that lovely? Your Sinclair gave this game 14% and said it looked like it was put together by a class of infants, which you can't really argue with. The ever-reliable Sinclair user, on the other hand, gave it 64%. Shame on you, Alan Dykes. I mean, oh dear. Again, Sinclair user just being completely useless. And it was this level two, and we're flying over the sea, and there are radar dishes that can kill us, or satellite dishes, which you can't shoot, and you have to avoid the beams they they shoot out. Weird. Bit like in some of the greatest games, where you have to avoid the uh, the things, the solar flares from the suns. Why am I comparing this rubbish to Gradius? Oh, game over. Um, no fun has been had at all. Lovely bug on the high score screen. If you keep on typing characters, you just go over to the end and overlap the score. Over to the Commodore 64 version, uh, dated 1990. I think Zeppelin put this out every Christmas because some of the magazines seem to review this in 91 and 92. So, yeah, uh, much smoother on the C64. Nice coming over to something a bit more smooth, but then again, it's easy to get smooth scrolling on the C64 with the hardware assistance. You can cross over the background there, you'd think you'd die when you crash into those mountains, but now you overlap, so you've got the full width of the screen. Um, it's still a complete nut and mess, and you fire crackers or Christmas puddings or something else. Holly reads, I think, um, some of the time. I'm using a cheat here on C64, by the way. Um, some of the baddies need to seem to take more than one hit to kill them. A fairly decent music track on the C64, certainly after that CPC and Spectrum music. We're at the end of level one, and I don't know what this baddie is. It appears to be some kind of... Two elves holding hands? I've got no idea at all. I'm just shooting them. Let's not question it, and there they are. They're all dead. So again, we're a third of the way through the game. We've got bonus pixies times 100. Marvellous. At least it's colourful on the C64 and a bit more polished than those abominations on the Spectrum and the Amstrad. The gameplay, it, however, is still utter tripe. And, okay, you're going to find out now that you know how we could cross over the backgrounds on level one. Level two, you cannot. You have to avoid the backgrounds and just have some consistency in your game design. Either you can touch the backgrounds or you can't. That's the end of level two. There's no end of level baddie on level two. So now we're two thirds of the way through the game and this is level three. And the baddie's taking multiple hits to kill them, which is really, really, really annoying. You know, I'm, I quite like these graphics on the C64 do have a nice cheesy Christmassy look to them. I do like some of the backgrounds and how they're drawn. It's a shame this is plays like utter pap. It's rubbish. So here we are at the end of the game. You heard me correctly. This is the end of the game. Where a giant, two giant Christmas trees with an angel in the middle attack you and fire presents at you. And it takes many, many hits to kill the giant Christmas trees with floating things in the middle. Oh, it's just... They've got a fairly decent engine running on the C64 here. They could have done something a bit better than this. And there we go. I've just used my infinite lives just to kill him. We've delivered all this year's Christmas prezzies. All at Zeppelin. Wish you a very Merry Christmas. Well, I'm sure everyone at Zeppelin is having a very Merry Christmas because... The poor player has paid £2.99 for about seven minutes of gameplay. They must be rubbing their hands together with Zeppelin. These mugs have bought this rubbish off us. Santa's Christmas Capers is a shambolic Christmas cash-in. A cynical one at that. The Amstrad CPC version is shoddy, slow, slightly ugly. It's got, it's got nice colours, admittedly, a bit of colour to it. Uh, the sound is appalling, the tune is out of tune, it's no fun to play at all. Pretty much the same thing applies to the Spectrum, except it's at least a little bit faster. 
Although, as we saw, there's about six minutes, seven minutes of gameplay in there, possibly three levels, nothing to it. Commodore 64 version, bit more polished, granted. Nicer sound, nicer graphics. Annoying inconsistency in terms of the background, what you can cross over and touch or not, so you just die on that second level if you touch backgrounds that were perfectly fine on level one. The, the two end of level baddies are absolutely embarrassing on the C64. What are they? At least on the Spectrum version, you've got that giant snow which is a quite nice end of level baddie. C64 version could have had that, but no, we've got a giant, two angel of pixie things and two giant Christmas trees. Absolutely terrible. The guys at Zeppelin will be rubbing their hands together because people have paid £2.99 for this rubbish and they can roll this out every single Christmas with some flashy artwork. I bet you, I bet you anything, I haven't checked this, they change the artwork every Christmas to try and fool people into thinking this tat was a new game. It just That's just kind of thing that comes to mind about a game like this. Either way, it's absolute tosh, a cynical Christmas cash-in, avoid. void.